It's my great pleasure to introduce the secretary, Julian Castro, who of the Housing and Urban Development, the former mayor of San Antonio, and dare I say, a rock star on our national landscape. Secretary Castro was appointed to the cabinet in 2014. He is a leader in using performance-driven approaches to expand opportunities, both in his hometown of San Antonio and now for the nation. And his experience makes him a perfect guest to talk with us about the power of evidence to improve the quality of city life. Please join me in welcoming the secretary. Thank you uh, very much, Tim. Good afternoon. Thank you, Tim, for uh, your kind introduction and uh, for all of your magnificent work to make this uh, day possible and for all the great work I know that is to come. Uh, you and I share uh, two things, at least in common. Uh, we both have a passion for urban policy, and uh, both of us serve presidents who call Chicago home. Uh, I'm glad that uh, these common bonds have brought us together today and I deeply appreciate your efforts. I'd also like to thank President Zimmer for his outstanding contributions. Mr. President, uh, you know, I'm not gonna pretend that I've read your book, Ergodic Theory and Semi-Simple Groups, <laughs> but uh, I can say without reservation uh, that your service is making a profound difference here in Chicago and our nation and beyond. Uh, I also wanna express uh, my appreciation uh, to Tom Pritzker for his generous contribution and for all the wonderful work that you and the foundation are doing to make a difference. Uh, and uh, want to thank uh, Mayor Emanuel for having me in his hometown. Uh, he is a rock star mayor uh, and is doing wonderful work here in Chicago and I'm grateful for all that he has accomplished in housing and urban policy and beyond. Thank you, Ram for having us. I also want to give a shout out to, this guy is like the unofficial dean of mayors in the United States, uh, Mayor Nutter from Philadelphia. I know this as a former mayor, uh, so well respected, doing amazing work, uh, and I, I enjoyed my visit to Philadelphia a few months ago. Uh, thank you, Michael, for your great work. And then finally, let me thank all of you, the University of Chicago community. Uh, this institution is, uh, goes without saying, one of uh, America's jewels of our higher education system. Uh, one that has done so much fantastic work across fields. Uh, HUD is proud to work with you on a number of efforts, including preparations for next year's Habitat III, the United Nations Conference on Housing and Sustainable Urban Development, and it's a pleasure to be with you to celebrate the launch of this Urban Labs initiative. This launch comes at uh, a perfect time for both the United States and the world. We are, in 2015, in this century, living in a century of cities. The global urban population is expected to nearly double by the year 2050. The highest rate of urbanization, as President Zimmer noted, in human history. Here in the United States, by 2050, it's estimated that the population will grow by 80 million and that 60 million of those folks are likely to live in America's urban communities. On one hand, this presents us with new and incredible opportunities to strengthen human connections to enhance our cultural bonds and to speak transformatively about economic growth. On the other hand, though, it also presents us with challenges that need to be dealt with smartly in areas ranging from energy to health to education. So we've got to act today in order to prepare for tomorrow. And this requires more than just effort and commitment. It requires deep understanding and precise knowledge. To paraphrase the favorite son of this great state of Illinois, Abraham Lincoln, it's the duty of every person 
to be wiser today than he or she was yesterday. We must always use all the tools at our disposal to explore the great issues of our time, to test out promising new approaches, to evaluate their impact, and to apply what we learn to actually shape policy. That's what makes your work with evidence-based policy so fundamentally exciting and important. Your research will help light the way forward, and all of us at HUD are thrilled about this new effort. The issues that you're focusing on, education, crime, poverty, health, energy, and the environment, are deeply interconnected with housing and urban development, and we're eager to partner with you. Helping to create thriving urban places has been our fundamental mission since the Department of Housing and Urban Development was created in 1965. Fifty years ago, when President Johnson signed the act that created HUD, he said that our work could, quote, give every family a home of dignity, a neighborhood of pride, and a community of opportunity. Today, we call ourselves the Department of Opportunity, and every day we work block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood, to fulfill this promise, to help build cities that are rich with possibility, places where folks can bring their big dreams and bold ideas to life. But the way we're doing this is and must be different from years past because our resources simply haven't kept up with the needs of those we serve. In fact, today, there are 7.7 .7 million folks in the United States who are low income, who are not receiving any government assistance, who are spending more than 50% of their income on rent, or living in substandard housing, or both. This is up nearly 50% since 2003. Meanwhile, funding for traditional programs that have helped create more affordable housing, like CDBG and our home initiative, has been cut in half since 2010. Our CDBG initiative has been cut by 25 percent. And at HUD, since 1981, the number of employees has gone down by half. So we're increasingly relying on evidence-based practices to ensure that we're investing in what's working and making adjustments where we see that something's not. We have our own in-house policy development and research team that conducts rigorous evaluations of HUD's programs. It analyzes data and ultimately helps us deploy resources in a way that best supports families and entire communities. For example, as many of you know, our Choice Neighborhoods Initiative was launched to turn poverty areas into areas of prosperity. Right now, there are communities across the nation where development has been too limited, investment has been too scarce, and struggle has been too familiar for its residents. So we launched Choice Neighborhoods in 2010 to help local leaders from all sectors break through the silos work together amongst themselves and, and the federal government with a big picture approach to revitalize communities holistically. And right now, we're managing a study of the first five recipients of our biggest choice grants. And the verdict is in that this effort is working. Take areas like the Woodlawn neighborhood here in Chicago. As many of you know from your own involvement, the Woodlawn Choice Project has taken a $30 million grant and leveraged it for another $380 million in investment. It's taken blighted, abandoned structures and turning them into symbols of progress and improvements in quality of life. We know from research that choice neighborhood is one answer to complex urban challenges. And we want this answer to be available to Americans for generations to come. Another example is a program that we call Jobs Plus. It's designed to provide public housing residents with intensive job training, rent incentives, and a community of support. Our research has demonstrated that 
this effectively incentivizes public housing residents to get the job training that they need to acquire the resources to move up and out. This initiative is currently active in 10 cities. It continues to be analyzed and HUD has made a $100 million request in the budget to expand it even more. So the bottom line is that evidence-based policy is producing results. I know it's doing the same for partners in all sectors. And that's why I'm excited to join you today as you launch Urban Labs. You're going to provide us and so many others with the evidence we need to make the sharpest, most informed decisions possible. Your work will continue to our, add to our collective understanding on a wide range of issues and ultimately be a powerful force to ensure that this century of cities is full of widespread opportunity for so many Americans. Because ultimately we know that aside from the studies and the statistics and the analyses, all of this investment in work is really about one thing, the people that we serve. I want to thank you for the privilege of joining you for the launch of Urban Labs. I know that your efforts will help shape the next chapter of urban development. And I look forward to our continued work together to protect and enhance the American city's role as a place of possibility and prosperity and the role that the University of Chicago has in making our cities even greater. Thank you.